Okay, I'm hoping this is... Oh, it looks alright, that. Okay, so, digestion. Uh, I'm just going to do... Uh, this one's the sort of first of probably quite a long series of videos, to be honest, um, covering the nutrition aspects. And I just thought we'd start off really with what digestion is and what the purpose of it is. So, the idea is that in your diet you take in uh, a number of large and insoluble molecules and the purpose of digestion is that using enzymes you're going to make those into small soluble molecules why do they need to be small and soluble so that they can cross cell membranes So that you can absorb them and you know again if you think about sort of amino acids you're kind of you know cells are mainly made of protein and you're taking in uh, protein in your diet you're breaking it down with enzymes you're making it into amino acids they're going into your cell membranes and you want to make your own stuff with that that's that's what assimilation is it's making your own stuff out of what you've taken in so um, I'm just thinking sort of synoptically what kind of large and insoluble molecules might you be taking in and you know, I think this is probably one of the areas where you might need to recall the names of bonds so if you think about sort of our key component of our diet is in the form of starch which is made out of alpha glucose which again that might be something that you need to remember so we've got starch and of course the bonds that we need to break to release um, the smaller soluble molecules are glycosidic links And they, of course, will be one for alpha links. <coughs> so that's, that's you know, if you think about all our staple foodstuffs, they're pretty much starch, rice and wheat and potatoes. You might be taking in protein. And you might need to remember that your... Uh, the link that you're getting rid of there or breaking is going to be your peptide bond and so that you're taking in proteins and you're actually releasing out of the end of them the amino acids and we'll do sort of you know the detail as we go through of how that happens how you get these really long molecules into shorter ones and of course we've got lipid which is glycerol and three fatty acids and the bond that you're breaking there hydrolyzing would be an ester linkage so really digestion is the enzymes we're talking about hydrolysis reactions so that's a bit of sort of synoptic just reminding you of the bonds that you're breaking um, obviously starch is made of amylose and amylopectin and one of them is branched so the amylopectin is branched so you've got some 1,6 linkages in there you might be asked about cellulose of course with you know it's kind of uh, repeating units of beta glucose where they're flipped by 180 degrees so your glycosidic bonds are on each side and the hydrogen bonds and the fact that that forms fibre in your diet and is uh, less digestible and certainly you need bacteria to do that and we'll be coming back to these ideas again and again with enzymes you might need to recall the factors affecting the rate
so pH, temperature, substrate, enzyme concentration, you might be asked about inhibition, competitive, and non-competitive, and actually inside your body there are competitive systems to kind of, you know, make sure that everything goes at the correct speed. And of course, the other thing is that enzymes are as we know, proteins, um, and therefore you might be looking at amino acid sequences, so that's all about the nucleotides, you might, so you might be looking at mutation, you might be asked about uh, the role of endoplasmic reticulum, will certainly be coming across lysosomes as being filled with, surprisingly, hydrolytic enzymes. And you could be asked about the role of Golgi body in secretion. And then just moving on to the sort of synoptic about crossing cell membranes, well, what might they ask you about? They might ask you about diffusion. I think they would probably be mainly be talking about facilitated because you know you know from core that glucose can't just be can't diffuse across but of course lipid soluble things can so it could be either one of those uh, we must never forget osmosis and our water potential gradients for crossing membranes uh, so there are passive ones, and then of course you've got endo and exocytosis. And again we'll come across that when we do sort of nutrition in amoeba. And active transport. And again we'll be dealing with secondary active transport when we talk about absorption from the ileum. And of course, if we're looking at data, we mustn't forget that cy the, the effect of cyanide to stop it. So there are all the sort of little bits of synoptic that might just creep into this uh, topic. It's quite a big topic and it's got quite a lot in it. And you know, I wouldn't be sort of stressing about the detail of this, the detail of this will sort of do as we're going through this topic, but they're the things that you need to be sort of aware of as we're going through. And you might need to go back to some of your other booklets or some of the other videos and look some of those things up as we go through.